Hey y'all, um, it's Sunday, July 28th, man. Um, I'm always nervous before these shows, man, but shout out to DJ Pest for this dang um, video, man. Like every, the graphics, everything's always just like on point. So starting off with that, cause I always say that last and mess it up. So shout out to DJ Pest. Secondly, most importantly, shout out to 10 PM Prob and their staff for the night. Tonight was, this is America part two. And, uh, I wasn't expect. I'm, I'm never expecting the most, but tonight I think we got the most out of it. So, I appreciate everybody who came to the show, everybody who performed on the show, and mainly the person who got the footage of the show. Because now you guys can find out what I'm talking about. The show. This is America. Watch when he rewinds this. He's gonna play it from the beginning. Two 
Johnson, um, we just finished up. This is America too. Um, great crowd. Thank everybody for coming out. It was a, a good lineup of comics. We had a great audience tonight. Um, you guys can follow me on all social media platforms: Facebook, just Darrell Johnson. You guys can follow me on Instagram: Striker six two three S T R Y K E R six two three. So follow me for for future shows and events. Thank you. Um, I had a racist experience recently. Any racists in here at all? <laughs> Close one. There's a couple brothers in here. We would have had to take you out right there, guys. Uh, would have been bad. Uh, I did a racing experience, though. I was at Safeway and got his spent, like, mistaken for Hispanic. And not the way you want to get mistaken, you know? I was just walking around, and this little white guy comes up to me and just pushed me. And he was like, hey, you, go back to Food City. <laughs> That's racing the shit, dude. What? <laughs> But then, like a week later, I went to Food City, and I got some great fucking deals. Uh, <laughs> so I, you can get a pass of tortillas for 99 cents. That's, that's so good right there. Um, a little more about me. Uh, I, have a, I have a stepdad. You stepdads in here? Yeah. yeah. That was pathetic. Did you hear that? Right <laughs> that says my kids don't love me. Yeah. So. And in there, dude. Uh, I got it pretty rough because my stepdad is a pastor. Exactly. And that means uh, my mom had to go to a church. She saw the pastor and she was like, I want to fuck that, you know? <laughs> so that's what I got to deal with, you know? And I don't know if you know this about stepdads, but their whole goal is for the kid to eventually call them dad. Like, they are working so hard for you, it's sad. I said that, he tried so hard. The other day he filled my gas tank, and he was just standing outside of my car, and he was like, you're welcome, son. And I was just like, thanks. Dwayne, okay, yeah. Still in my head though, no? And I found something out that made me realize I'm probably never gonna call him dad, you know? I was going through his closet, and I found an empty box of condoms. Empty box of condoms. So like this dude wants me to call him dad, but he's too good at busting my mom. <laughs> dude, you gotta be creaming my mom for me to call you dad. That's just how that works right there. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> wow. 
That's a good joke. And you can't, you can't act like that's not funny. Oh, come on! All I'm saying, though, is my mom's got to be calling you daddy for months before I do. That's just, that's how it is, guys. That's how it is. One time I, uh, one time I caught him having sex. That was, uh, the worst day of my life. Yeah, great. I walk in and my mom goes, Peter, it's not a big deal. We're just wrestling. And I know what sex is, so I was like, I'm going to get her back. The next day, we were out shopping, and I just felt this random lady, and I gave her a wave. And my mom was like, oh, Peter, who's that? And I was like, oh, uh, that's the lady who Dwayne wrestles with when you're not home. <laughs> Got her ass, yeah. I started to like make her pay even more. So like every summer I would visit my uncle when I came back, she was like, how was Uncle Rex? And I was like, it was pretty good. He just kept trying to like aggressive like, me in his closet. Uh, I'm just kidding, you guys, don't worry, I didn't wrestle my uncle. Like we fucked. Uh, what do you guys, uh, what do you guys think of Mesa? <laughs> good, good, okay, we all think it's shitty, that's what, that's us, we're at a horrible place, you know? Like, why? You know? I feel like Mesa got started when someone from Phoenix visited New Mexico, and they were just like, we need this back home! Boom! <laughs> New Mexico, you know? Fucking, okay, uh, it's the Mexico of Phoenix, that's all I have to say. <laughs> This is what happens when, like, 16-year-old white girls decide to keep the baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know it's true. You know it. <laughs> Moral of the story. Don't keep the baby. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> I love how many of you are like, that's not true. <laughs> you should always keep a baby. <laughs> Uh, I was in Mason though, uh, I had a, us passing through, had to stop me and some gas to try and get the fuck out of there. And while I'm there getting gas, I noticed on the sidewalk there was a lady laying down and her titty was out. Her titterus was out, you know? So I was like, I gotta go check out that titty. And I walk over to her. And it was actually really sad, she had a full needle in her arm, and there was an empty one on the ground. I know, right? So I did what I think we all would do, you know? I was like, ma'am, can I get you some help? And with a little bit of energy she had, she was just like, get away from me, you lesbian. <laughs> but I still to help her, you know? I couldn't just leave her there. So I just reached down, I pushed the needle, and I squeezed that to me, and I was like, sweet dreams, bitch! Sweet dreams! <laughs> Die. So. I like that some of you, I see a lot of guys in the audience that are like, this guy's funny, and a lot of girls that are like, next, you know? So, uh, your wish has been granted, I am no longer going to be on the stage, thank you guys so much. It's hot as hell here. I'm talking about hot as hell. I wore a pair of uh, peppermint uh, boxers. We don't know, y'all don't want to know what happened at the end of the day. The fuckers had flavors to them. That's hot as hell out here. Y'all ain't familiar with the SRP box. That son of a bitch been getting on my nerves all summer. Bitch keep beeping in my sleep. Ain't nobody listening to that shit. I know I got ten dollars on there. The kids been out of school too long. How many y'all ready for they they kids to go back? Oh yeah, yeah. Ain't that many people here with kids? Who got kids? Ah, the other people couldn't get a babysitter. <laughs> and the refrigerator been pissed as hell this summer. These kids been finding bullshit ways just to eat again. That in the uh, internet, I'm telling you, boy. 
I DoorDash for a living now. Just to pay my internet bill. I'm telling you, um, where my weed smokers at? I'm not from here. The weed here is different as hell. Even there, there's stoplights as long as hell here. I could have swore I went through two lights off this weed I smoked. And I knew it got real because the names was different as hell. Fucking the drugs is out here different as hell. I stay here in Tempe, so you know it's real. I tried, I had a friend for 15 seconds. <laughs> up here, he was snorting cocaine, he was in a conversation, I was wide open, I don't know why I took a sniff and sneezed $35 on my skirt. I lost that friend that fast, this goofy ass dude! I just said, where that long ass name of weed I was smoking earlier? When we go outside and wait by three lights. What else got to talk about here in Arizona? Um, Cause it's wild. The bugs out here is different. Y'all yeah, got some different names for these shits. I seen a bug that was this big that flew. Y'all yeah, call it a water bug. That is a roach, a beer factory roach. That's the kind of roach that you let crawl across your face for 30 seconds to make it to the next level. I was YouTubing back at home before I moved here, scorpions, and got stung by one. I minimize what I say. For real, anybody been stung by a scorpion? Yeah. yeah. I thought like MacGyver and put some wet Newport on it, Newport cigarettes on it with baking soda. Cause my insurance didn't kick in yet. <laughs> I get my credit score right. I don't need that shit on my. Don't buy a scorpion. That's $700. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else trying to get their credit score right? <laughs> Did I get these tickets on Groupon? <laughs> y'all quiet as hell. Who drinking the same shit I'm drinking? Because I know y'all fucked up. <laughs> I'm trying to get my credit right, man. My mama got AT&T in her name and shit on my shit. Didn't think I was gonna be shit. Y'all door for a living now. Y'all got some shit on y'all face. Y'all door dash to get away from my damn kids. Fuck that. Y'all been stung by a scorpion? Yeah. 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 Y'all smoking on super sour AZ weed too, huh? <laughs> If you got that, come meet me in the back. I got some. What's up? It's your boy Belly B. Just got through doing my thing up at Tempe Improv, man. Y'all can catch me at Stand Up Live August 1st with Laugh and Nod Your Head with Mellow B, DJ Pest. Y'all catch me here again on 11th at uh, Tip of Improv with Brown and Tanners, man. It's your boy Belly B, you catch me on all the social sites. Catch me dancing at the nursing homes with your aunties. I'll get up with you. Yes, hello everyone, how is everyone doing? I had a big room here, I'm a game man, we re re <laughs> Oh goodness, I love it here, I love it here. There is a good looking crowd. You guys, I'm a little self-conscious right now. I'm a little self-conscious because I, 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 I've been growing this mustache, right? This mustache and beard. And it gets real severe, right? It's real severe. And I'm trying to do like this Freddie Mercury look, right? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, that. It's not working out, though. <laughs> Freddie Mercury look. Or, or like my dad likes to call me. You look like a faggot Mario brother. <laughs> Game was dead, huh? Yeah, I'd run that game. 
I jump on the mushroom and it gets bigger. <laughs>
then the body works, you know, I wonder, it just it works magic. It, it came out, it came out by itself, right? I was like, my tummy hurts. And I sat down and it came out. Like magic. Yeah. I made it myself, sir. It was like crafts. It's like crafts, sir, because you know, like when that happens to a gay man, it's different. It's different. Because it comes out and the poop is inside the condo. It's like a snow globe. But brown. It's like a habu. <laughs> This is fucking oh, wild. Boy, gross. Um, <laughs> this is wild. Yeah, I'm dating. I'm dating. You know, the problem is, <laughs> I don't know how to date. I don't know how to date. I either date guys that are really old or really young. Oh my god, I dated this old guy one time. I dated this old guy one time. Old ass fucker. Oh my god. This is the kind of old guy when you hug him for the night, they pee a little. Yeah. It's too old. Yeah. And my ex boyfriend, I'm 42 years old, and he was 21 years old. 21. You know what that makes me that we're all friends? A gay Mexican cougar. <laughs> I'm a fad war. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you this story really quick, and uh, and I gotta get out of here. So, uh, any any dads here? Any dads here? Not daddies, dads. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my, my dad is my best friend. My dad is my best friend, and, and he, he totally speaks up for me all the time. And this one time in particular, I'll tell you real quick. So um, I was about 19 years old, and I was moving into my first apartment. And what I didn't tell you guys, I used to be a, a, a dancer, right? Not, not for a month, not for a dollar, sir. But yeah, you can hear that later. But uh, uh, I used to be like a technical dancer. So I had this little banging body, and I found this uh, this outfit from this cute movie outfit, right? Yeah. I wanted to show off that body. I found some little booty shorts from K Mama. Mm -hmm. He said, Thug Life in the back, he was from the West Side. And I Paul that door t shirt that says, Straight up, now tell me. And some hugs. My butch look. Yeah. This guy, he looks at me, he looks at my dad, he tells my dad, Is that your son? He looks like a little girl. No, my dad was not having it. He's like, You know what this thing? I feel silly doing that, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what I said? My son is more man than you'll ever be, and prettier than your ugly wife. And I was like, oh my god, my dad just called me pretty. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. My name's Ernesto. Please have a wonderful night. I'll quickly start by you know, telling something about myself. I'm Indian, uh, if you guys couldn't tell already. Any race death motherfuckers in the crowd, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but here's the thing, I'm not the type of Indian you guys killed in a genocide. Yeah, I'm the type of Indian the British killed in a genocide. So basically what I'm getting at is if you eat non bread or fry bread, you get fucked in genocide. Like the Jewish folks had the rye bread, they too got to really fucked in a genocide. So the point being, I think carbohydrates are the problem. <laughs> a ketogenic diet is a genocide-free diet, is what I'm going to be Talking about genocides, I was at this uh, restaurant recently, very smooth transition if you get it. And name of the restaurant, Genghis Grill. I don't know if, you've got, if you guys have been to this part, Genghis Grill. Really good Mongolian food, great spot, but I think they went a little hard on the name. <laughs> Naming your restaurant after a dude who killed like 20 million people. Dude, I can't open up a brewery and call it the Hitler, can I? <laughs> I can't be welcome to the Hitler at the hour starting at 9. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. <laughs> Yeah, talking about needlessly killing innocent people, I had uh, a you know, little uh, an interaction with the uh, Tempe PD recently. Alright, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I lost my bike last year, people. I lost my bike last year and fine folks at Tempe PD found my bike back after one full year. 
one full year they took and found my fucking shitty bike back. <laughs> no wonder this motherfucker is getting stabbed and shot in dark alleyways in Phoenix and Tempe. This dude's out there looking my found my shitty bike for a year. <laughs> Probably one dude just like punching in the clock every day. Like some sort of Robert Mueller or bike investigations. <laughs> I like the gas station cutie. You guys like cutie? Any cutie heads? Yeah. Great fucking gas station. You get in, get out, quick customer service. But, dude, it's not that serious. You don't need to ring up seven other people with me. I just bought donuts, man. Like, stakes are not that high as I'm getting at. Like, seriously, like, I'm what I'm getting at. Like, there's no one sitting in like some sort of boardroom making actual decisions with a QT coffee cup, okay? So just take it easy, is what I'm saying. And weird marketing shit bothers me. Like, I was at the grocery store recently, I was super hungry, so I bought a clip bar. I'm hungry, I bought a clip bar. The cashier is like, Honey, do you want to donate a dollar for hunger relief? I'm like, I just did, bitch. <laughs> What the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> Trying to double tip on my action here, come on. We actually do, like, Domino's Pizza sends me a text message. They're like, you deserve Domino's. You deserve Domino's. Kind of felt like a derogatory statement to me. It's like, Domino's is all you deserve, you piece of shit. You can't afford better food. Home Depot has an ad, Home Depot is like, everybody shops at Home Depot. Everybody shops at Home Depot. Everybody? Let's stop showing the fucking ad, dude. Mission accomplished, okay? You have 100% of the market share. What the fuck else do you want right now? I saw this dollar store, I was driving down the street, saw this dollar store, name of the store, 99 cents and up. That's every fucking store, man. What the hell? Yanny, yeah, any, any Mexicans in the house? Is it? That is a stupid question to begin with. There's a Mexican in almost every house at any given point in time. But I think Mexicans like are the bravest people around. They're super brave. Like they have the balls to name their kids Jesus. <laughs> Dude, white people don't have that kind of cojones, okay? <laughs> they name their kids after like the dudes who hung out with the main guy, you know, John and Paul and Matthew. <laughs> That's fucking stupid. Like if you're a big fan of Pablo Escobar, you, you're gonna name your son Pablo Escobar. You know? Not name him after the dude who brought his groceries. You know? The guy who's cleaning his gun and shit. Last thing, I have a half black, half white friend, cool guy, but he keeps calling himself brown, which bothers me because the market for brown is pretty cornered already. You know? And also, dude, have you taken an arts and crafts class? You, know, you mix black and white, it's gray, motherfucker. <laughs> Barack Obama was the first gray president, okay? <laughs> Never had a gay president. He's a great president, so you're getting there. Oh, man, I've been in this country for a few years now, it's pretty cool, like, you know, most of the times it's pretty cool, but every now and then, you know, there's a guy, you know, who's, who's driving a Dodge van, wearing a John Deere hat, yells out some shit at you, right? That happens every now and then, and sometimes it's the president, too. They say, go back to where he came from. Go back to where he came from. See, I, I understand where you're coming from, man, but here's the thing, I paid $50,000 to go to college here. I'm gonna stay here at least until far fucking ever. All right. That was my time. You guys are so this is America, huh? Where are my Mexicans at? It's like three of them. Fucking three cars. All for me, Spacer. Where are my black folks at? Where are my white folks at? Hell was yeah. The original immigrants. My grandparents called them white backs. So we got a lot of white people, some... Oh wait, where are my natives? 
I knew I forgot to close the gate when I left the rest. <laughs> Fucking like the DES office in here, Chad. <laughs> okay, wait in your room. <laughs> so, Native American. Uh, a lot of people don't know what a modern day Native American looks like. I often get mistaken for being a mini Samoan. <laughs> I know we're both Filipino. And depending on the dance club, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> Probably because of my native tongue. <laughs> Uh, crazy stuff happened in my life. Uh, I recently got divorced. And it was my divorce be black. Woo! Thank you. Nobody knows how bad it has to get being a divorce, you know? I'm getting angry, going to sleep bad, staring at the wall, both of you guys, looking over your shoulder. Accidentally touching elbows. <laughs> it's crazy though, because me and my ex still have a great relationship, right? We still have pet names for each other's. She calls me two-day dad. <laughs> and on my child support checks, I write, thanks for babysitting. <laughs> it's crazy though, I mean, divorce is really hard on the kids, you know. It's really, really hard on the kids, man. We were fighting over them because neither of us wanted them. <laughs> I have to write my child support, support checks every Tuesday at noon. And if I don't write it at noon, if I don't send it, I get a phone call at 1 p.m. She's like, hey, you're late. And I was like, yeah, you're late too, that's why we're in this situation. <laughs> People ask me, hey, Wolf, how many kids you got? I tell them all I have. One, little two, little three, little eight, little eight. <laughs> Four, little five, little six, probably, I don't know. Because <laughs> when it comes to sex, I'm very traditional. And by traditional, I mean I don't use a condom. That's how I know the DES office really well. <laughs> I was just feeling good today. Uh, I woke up this morning a little bit under the weather. I don't know if it's the dust storms or what. I told my grandmother, I was like, I don't think we'll make it to the show tonight. She was like, grandson, go see your uncle. He's a medicine man. He can heal you. So I went to the Walgreens where he works. When I was at the Walgreens, they're like, hey, Mr. Brown, can you donate a quart of blood? I said, I can't do that for you guys, man. They said, why not? I said, because I don't need some non-native getting this quarter and enrolling in my tribe. <laughs> can't have these fools all up on my benefits and shit. <laughs> right now, I get free housing, free health care, quarterly payouts, scholarships. I mean, if that sounds like a brag, it's because it is. <laughs> Hashtag red privilege. <laughs> it's also a reason to get knocked out by a chubby native comedian tonight. <laughs> I mean, I might not be there for this kid, but my tribe will be. <laughs> oh, man. When I was a young boy, my grandfather told me to be a great warrior, I must break into the white man's fort and steal his horses. When I became of age, there was no more forts, so I broke into the next best thing, an elderly gated community. <laughs> I stole an old man's Mustang. That's like 350 horses. <laughs> that made me chief for a day. I'm recently single, so I'm trying to date like Ernesto, it is tough. It's very tough, you know, whenever I go to a bar, the first thing I do is I walk up to a lady and I look at her left hand to see if there's a ring. Because if I see a ring, it lets me know that she's unhappy. <laughs> I fuck around too much, seriously. Oh, like this chick walks up to me the other day, she's like, hey, buy a pretty girl a drink? I was like, yeah, where's she at? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 don't run away, don't run away, you know. I'm, I'm a gentleman. I've always believed in ladies first. You buy the first round, I buy the next. 
I look a lot younger than I am, and I always get hit on by cougars and stuff. The other day, this older lady walks up to me, starts touching my face, like, oh my god, you look so young and innocent. I was like, yeah? She's like, yeah, but you don't even imagine what this looks like. I was like, I imagine it's neglected and abused. <laughs> my buddy, we were uh, hanging out, and we saw this really beautiful girl, and he was telling me, hey, what would you, how many nights would you want with a girl like that, you know? I was like, just one, bro. He's like, really? Just one night with her? I was like, yeah. Why not two? Why not three? I said, because I can't let her down three nights in a row. <laughs> My buddy was telling me, hey, bro, what drink can you buy a girl that's a big panty dropper? I told him, slim fast. <laughs> I just gotta wait. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm afraid you guys have a great night. Wolf Brown in the motherfucking house. Uh, you can catch me at the Brown and Tanner show coming up August 11th. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun, guys. Bye. Yeah, that's some scotch. I never had scotch before. That's uh, it's disgusting. Um, <laughs> so thanks, thanks, Wolf. Um, I, I have, I got this trip. Well, I don't. I used to have this job. Uh, <laughs> it's got fired like a couple weeks ago. Shouts out to me. Make some noise. Unemployment. Woo -woo. Uh, but no, I used to be, uh, I used to be this leasing agent, uh, at an apartment complex. Show of hands, who's, uh, who still lives in an apartment complex? Apartment community? A couple of y'all? The rest of you motherfuckers got houses and shit, huh? Got that 620 credit score that's qualified and everything? Should've checked the demographics. Um, I'm telling jokes to the wrong people. <laughs> no, I'm a leasing agent. Like, I'm the guy you come to, like, when you want to take a tour, I'm the guy you come to. Um, and I, like, when I was working, I was like, I'm gonna be, the, like, the realest leasing agent ever. Like, I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, the everything. Like, if you come and take a tour with me, you know, I'm gonna show you the one-bedroom apartment we got. You know, you got the, uh, the wood grain vinyl flooring, you know, you got the... We don't got the stainless steel appliances that are white, but they work just as good as the stainless steel. You know what I'm saying? You got walk-in closets and everything like that. You get all of this for like 900 bucks a month plus uh, tax and utilities. You know what I'm saying? That's the water sewer roach is trash. Uh, electricity is separate. <laughs> they like, oh, that goes just takes. Y'all got roaches? Yeah, we get just a few. Like they just, they just keep to themselves. You don't fuck with them, they don't fuck with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> But I do recommend putting the cereal inside the fridge at night. <laughs> you don't want to wake up to roaches in the cocoa puffs. <laughs> but it's good. They don't. They don't. They mean no harm. You just dig them out, scoop them out, just eat them. or you just tell them just put them in the shallow end. I'm gonna get the cocoa puffs in the deep end. Just wow. Well, fuck that job though. I got fired. They fired me. Sort of vicious. Uh, <laughs> anybody got that one friend that always gotta ask you for money and never pays you back? I'm that friend. Like, <laughs> I am quick to ask you for forty dollars and you'll never see me again. Like, it's it's bad. Like, it's gotten to a point with my friends and my friendship. Like, my friends gotta rob me just to get the money back. Like. <laughs> And they go all out, ski mask and everything. I was walking home from QT one time, this dude pulls up in a white van, ski mask gun. He's like, hey, give me a wallet, bitch, I'll cut your head off. I was like, yo, chill, chill. Like, you ever been in a situation like that? Like, no. <laughs> got houses, All you can do is just to stand there, just stutter vows. I was like, hey, 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 E, I, O, 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 you just. <laughs> he was like, yeah, you do owe me. And I was like, wait, what? He's like, nigga, it's me, Shamal, man. I just need that $40 I loaned you in three, three years ago. <laughs> he was like, yo, we still good for Fortnite tonight? We, we streaming tonight? Where we landing? Shit's wild. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, those, those nachos look nice. <laughs> yeah, please. I don't have a job, so you know. 
they paid me in alcohol, so yeah. motherfuckers hungry. No, it looks like ass, actually. <laughs> One of the damn nachos. <laughs> Speaking of ass, um, <laughs> is motherfuckers still out here eating ass? Like, I'm just trying to get us. Who's it? Yeah. The, the homeless guy in the back says, yeah. The guy with long hair, long beard, glasses. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> oh, you know, it's not going to all. He would be ass too. <laughs> hey, waitress, get, get a Sharpie. Get the, write, write your name on the cup. That's your cup now. Don't take, don't touch nothing else. Long hair, long hair, and ass, nasty. No, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. Uh, <laughs> this is an ass, like you know, it, it, should, it smells disgusting, but it, it looks delicious. Like, have you seen those videos? <laughs> you ever seen those videos, with, uh, man? Like those, I was watching this. Dude's going at it like it was seedless watermelon. Like, I was like, <laughs> just with the seeds, you gotta stop and take breaks. But no breaks, no pause, just straight watermelon action. <laughs> I was watching this one video. This dude was eating ass so good, I caught myself licking my fingers. I was like, <laughs> Like, what if I'm about to do it for the first time and it just goes bad? Like, <laughs> you know, just got the napkin in and everything. You know? <laughs> we all on the dinner table and I just dropped the drawers and she just got shit bits all over the ass crack. Right? Got crumbs all over the sheets and shit. She's sweeping the shit in my face. I got pink eye now, the dogs are barking. Like a raccoon staring through the window and shit, looking for something to eat. I don't know, I ain't nothing to eat here, nigga. It's ass. No, <laughs> Whole house smelling like, uh, what's up, uh, 51st Avenue and Southern, like, uh, go to the seaside, but just go down that intersection, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna do some more research. Um, who knows? I might try it. It might be the shit. Who knows? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. No, I don't eat ass no more. Thanks for coming out to the show. My name is Kingsley Mukamara. Uh, you can follow me on all social media platforms at King of Mukamara. That's K-I-N-G-A-M. And uh, just sound it out. Um, it was a good show, and everybody had a good time. I hope. Um, is that it? Yes, you're good. Hi, ugly bitches in the back. How are you? <laughs> Just kidding. Everybody's all sensitive. You know somebody's in here like, you ain't that cute, bitch. I know it. I'm not too cute and I'm not too ugly, but I leave motherfuckers alone. I know that. Ugly people are just getting rude now, you know that? They get, they, they got all the rights. No, bitch, no. You got some, not all, so. It's good to be here, though. I love it, I love it. I, uh, I, uh, let you know that I wasn't set up for success. If you hear a mispronounced word, uh, that's my mom and dad's fault. I, uh, 
Not blaming them, I'm working on it though. Here's the deal, I was not set up for success. I was homeschooled by my Aunt Gloria who cannot speak a lick of English, okay? This was some bullshit, okay? Not one word of English, right? I didn't even know I was an idiot until I was like 15 years old. I was in an argument, someone said, there's never been a Mexican president. I'm like, what about Tomas Jefferson? What about him? <laughs> I love it. I work with this nice lady. Uh, she calls me Gay Jean because I'm gay, bitch. Hello, handsome. You look good to me, bitch. <laughs> Just messing with you. Is that your man? Oh, so he's free game. Okay. <laughs> look at that. He's not wearing underwear. Just letting the balls hang out. That's nice. Makes the bitch feel welcome. Hello. Don't turn around. You'll get a surprise. <laughs> for me. All right. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I love it, though. I do. I love it. Because here's the thing. She calls me Gay Jean. Never, she just, never, 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 never will she go to Google. Anytime she wants to find out anything gay, she Googles. She comes over here. Hey, Gay Jean, Cher's coming to town. How much are the tickets? You know what I mean? Always. And that's okay. That's my friend. She's fat. I call her Fat Linda. We're friends, okay? This bitch is fat. I never Google recipes. Whenever I want to learn something, you know what, I just go and say, Hey, Fat Linda, how do I cook that lasagna again? How do I, how do I do that? I love Fat Linda. She's my friend. She comes to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. She, her heart is so good. She's like, what's for lunch? I'm like, diabetes, bitch. That's what's for lunch. I love her. We have a common enemy. Our common enemy is we work with this girl. This girl made a big announcement. She came in the office and she said, I want you guys all to know that I'm a feminist. I'm like, okay, bitch, I'm a fag. I got my own shit. Well, I don't know what you do, but all right. And then she said, but I'm no longer going to be wearing deodorant. And I'm like, ooh. 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 She smells like an onion. You know what I mean? I call this bitch Bedelia. Ugh. This bitch is nasty. I love it. I love, let me hear the Mexicans in the room make some noise. Let me hear the Mexicans. Okay, all right, thank you. That's what I thought. This is public service. All right, here's the deal. Until Mr. Trump leaves, we're Italian, motherfuckers. We're Italian. You better eat lasagna with a corn tortilla, bitch. We're, I'm on the brink of being deported. They may have already started deporting. I went to the kitchen, all white people. I'm nervous, bitch. You speak the language? You okay? I'll be sitting next to you on the bus. You know what I mean? I mean, right there with you. Can you sell shit? Okay, we're gonna sell those little chicklets and shit like that to live. <laughs> I know. Some white people in here are like, calm down, little fag. Calm down. <laughs> Deportation isn't gonna start. We're not kicking out all the Mexicans, just the illegal ones. To that, I say bullshit. I see Schindler's List. I know how it works. <laughs> I'm terrified. You terrified, sister? You feel good? I don't know. I'm nervous. Every day I leave the house, I'm like, this may be my last day, bitch. I'm so nervous I wrote the President of the United States a letter. I said, Mr. President, if I can stay in America, I'll build that goddamn wall myself. I'm gay and Mexican. That shit would be fabulous. Of course, I wrote that letter in crayon so he could read it, you know? If I was at home school, I'd write it in Russian, but I'm dumb, bitch. I don't know what's going on. People are like, calm down. We're not doing that. But they are. They're taking the little brown babies at the border. You heard this, lady? They're taking the brown babies at the border. That's a little Auschwitz thing for me. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. You're my boyfriend, too. This bitch. This bitch. He's white because I'm not dating a Mexican. You know, I got goals and shit. I can be born my own. This bitch, we go to the store. He's a little bit racist, you know. He goes to the store and he's like, Gene, I need you to go over there and get some lettuce and some bananas. Bitch, I am a, like a migrant worker. What the hell? You know what I mean? He knows I'm nervous. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm good with anxiety. I've had anxiety all my life. I'm, I'm from Michigan. Any Michigan people in here? All right, thank you back there. Listen, when I was growing up, they were stealing kids, right? I was terrified. I never wanted to leave the house. My mom would be like, come on, Mijo, let's leave. I'm like, no, they're going to get at me. So she put me on like one of those little horsey things like this, you know, put a quarter in there, and I get so relaxed, and I get so calm, and all that stress would go away. And then she would go in the store, and be like, mom, mom, where are you going? They're going to kidnap me. No, Mijo, no, they don't steal the brown ones. No, no. But that anxiety has got me good.
good now for this deportation. You know what I mean? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm ready for it. You know what I mean? And then just to let you know, sister, when they come for us, we're going to go into our house and we're going to take every rice. We're going to take every bee. We're going to take every spice. The only, the only thing you leave these bitches is salt. That's all they get. We're taking Cinco de Mayo too, bitch. Fuck you. Kicking us out like that. Quit hating on Mexicans. We just love you so much. Do you know that? We don't... We're the, we love Mother Earth. We're the original. Uh, we invented carpooling. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm gonna leave here, but now let me just hear all the straight people make some noise. Come on, let me hear the straight people. Come on, let me hear you. I love straight people. I come from you. You know what I mean? I come from you. Pick up for you fuckers all the time, and you need it too. Always down at K headquarters, they talk a lot of shit. Mostly the lesbians. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> lesbians are mean in 2019. Don't fuck with lesbians. I'm telling you right now, they are mean, and I would be mean too if I was a lesbian in 2019 with two hairstyles, the Justin Bieber and the Rod Stewart. That shit would piss me off. But I want you to know as I leave here today, as I leave, I am your ambassador. I stick up for you all the time. Sometimes they're like, get rid of the breeders, get rid of straighty. I'm like, calm down, vaccines and Von Dykes. Calm down. Because remember this. We need straight people because remember, we don't make ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Do a little more. My name is Steve Moore. Keep it going for your host, everybody. Come on, let here. Thank you, Whole Foods, for having me here tonight. Thank you guys so much. Let's get the chant started. We hate sprouts. Trader Joe's blows. We hate sprouts. Trader Joe's blows. like this it was about cucumbers now they're unhealthy for you now that if you eat too many you become in cucumber and you can't move <laughs> hey how do you guys like your jalapenos warmer or cooler because personally I like my peppers a little burr, chili peppers who's with me Kids of the cooking show. Julia's children. I'll give you another one. What do you guys call a mouse of the cooking show? Martha Stewart Little. Is anyone offended by that last joke, by the way? <sighs> Thank God. That is what comedy is all about now, never being offended. That's why I stopped buying lamps, actually. I find they come with too much shade. And if you don't like that joke, light it up! Whole Foods. <laughs> I was rewatching one of my favorite movies, uh, The Mummy with uh, Tom Cruise. Kidding, Brendan Fraser. <laughs> they kind of relit this fire in me to want to be an archaeologist, and then I went on Glassdoor, and that's like a salary review site, and that fire was extinguished. 30 $2,000 a year. That is why it is so important that first year to excavate a lost village to have some place to live. <laughs> really, archaeologists don't like the side of a shovel. It just keeps reminding they keep digging themselves into debt. But you know, that's what happens when you pursue a career of professional finders keepers. <laughs> Whole Foods. job though, you know? It's the only job where you can find like a human skeleton and you're like super excited about it. As long as it's old enough. 21st century, huh, yikes, call the police. 14th, 15th century, mummified, get the news vans down here, let's get the auctioneer. Who wants to bid on this human skeleton for $15,000? I don't have electricity. Do I hear anyone in the room? $10,000, my wife left me, anyone? Okay, how about a trade? How about this human skeleton for a loaded gun with two bullets? I'd like to give my ex-wife the rest of the divorce settlement. Fair enough. 
Can I get one of those high paying jobs? You know, be a lawyer. You know? You know why lawyers love practicing law in New York City? Because New York has the most sewers. Sometimes you get there, sometimes you don't. I'd like to get a warm poll, a nice gauge of the audience right now, okay? Just shout out what you like more. What do you guys like more, bestiality or incest? Shut it up! Shut up! Shut up! You guys can hear the question, what do you guys like better, Betty? Betty, your dog, or your hot cousin? Bestiality and test case. One one. It's tied up. Who wants to break the tie? Shut up! Shut up! Incest, thank you, Dad. <laughs> guys, did you one incest taste the guy? Guys, give it up for incest, everyone. Come on. Give it up for incest. Thank you. What if the sex is better? What? Maybe you want to share more than just DNA with a monkey. Maybe you just want the D. <laughs> hey, you want slow anal? That's a giant tortoise guarantee. Trevor Skies, uh, we just did This Is America 2. Uh, there was no mass shooting, so it's kind of a letdown on that part. Um, anyway, you can catch me every Thursday at 10.30 p.m. at Stand Up Live, August 11th at the Comedy Store Sidewalk in Bellary, where we'll be doing the show. Okay, cool, thank you. And, uh, so tonight I want to thank uh, the guy that owns more of my own stuff than I do, my pawn guy. <laughs> and, uh, my wife, who uh, we're celebrating six years, five years, five years tomorrow. Feels like 30, but five years. <laughs> So I'm going to Greg and Brenda, and the Chief of Police, thank you for not putting me in jail. And the rest of you guys, I want to thank you guys all for coming. Who was at uh, Mom So Hard last night? Jesus Christ. Well, welcome to Dad So Soft. And the rest of you, I want to thank you guys for coming tonight. Because if you didn't come, I wouldn't get to come. And I've been looking forward to coming all week. I want to come every day this week, and if I do my job right, maybe some of you will come multiple times. Well. Either way, thank you for coming. Thank you. I did one right. I know that 
you know, they've got driverless cars, and driverless cars to me is one of the stupidest things they could ever come out with. Like, we really need driverless cars. And right now, the people that are making those cars are uh, Range Rover and Tesla. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but if I'm going to spend $80,000 to $100,000 on a car, I better be fucking driving it. <laughs> There's no way to look cool pulling up at someone's house, rolling down the driver's side window from the passenger side, looking out going, Hey, check out my new ride! It's an $80,000 cab, people. If they're going to do that stuff, I think they should fix the shit that they started with in the first place. Like closed caption? Anybody watch videos for closed caption? They got nothing to fucking say what they got, what they're really saying in the video. I watch my own comedy on YouTube. I'm a funny motherfucker, I'll tell you that. I got to be the most popular person in the deaf community. For real. For real. It's crazy. What else do they need to fix? Everything. They need to fix everything. Everything sucks. Vacuums suck. <laughs> My wife is great. <laughs> Happy anniversary, honey. I uh, was driving that by a store the other day, and on the window they had painted on the window said Parkinson's Fitness. I tried real hard to think in my head what the fuck Parkinson's fitness could be. All I could think of is that maybe they like, like take those people and put them in like that fat machine with the belt around them and just leave. <laughs> hey, as long as they got a fair shake, that's all that matters. I know it's bad, it's bad. Fair shake, talking about that. Who here is married? Anybody on date night? Nobody. Everybody's married, but nobody's on date night. You fucking suck. My ex-wife was a freak. She wouldn't even do date night. We had to have date break night. Yeah, see, we lived in an apartment, so she wanted me to go around the back, crawl on the window, do my thing, and then crawl back out. She told me, she said, when you come through that window, you better bring your A-game. Because I am going to fight you off. I said, shit, bitch, if I think I'm going to get laid, it's on. So I crawled through that window, and I'll tell you what, she had the strength of a man. At one point, I found myself on the bottom with my pants being pulled down. If it wasn't for my ninja skills and the fear of having something stuck up my butt, I might have been in trouble. But I managed to get out of that, do my thing, and get out of there. Only to find out that I called in the wrong window. So needless to say, I got a divorce and moved in with the neighbor. And then he wanted a commitment. Which would explain the strength of a man and the hairy butthole. If you're going to be having sex, quack, quack, someone's there quacking, we got a duck in the house. If you're going to have sex, people use uh, condoms, please be safe. I stopped when I bought a box of condoms and the clerk asked me, he said, do you need a bag to go with that? I said, no, she ain't that fucking ugly. <laughs> he said, the bag is for you, douche. I said, give me two then. But if you're going to use a condom, you may need a lubricant. If you're going to have anal sex, do not use toothpaste. <laughs> That is right on the tube fights cavities. <laughs> and my ass is still burning. But she has fresh breath. <laughs> I'm getting older, getting older sucks. Because as you get older, you forget everything. Our memory goes so bad. Which I think I'm um, probably the token grandpa on the show, right? Um, shut up, Bobby. Um, and the thing is that we always forget the important things, the things that we tell ourselves, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, I forgot. But we remember the shit we should forget. Like when I was a kid, I grew up on a farm. I would like to forget about the time that my parents let me milk our bull. It takes all day, folks, to get a little bit of milk out of that. And it's 
actually kind of more of a creamer. Oh. Which is probably the reason I don't like milk. Or beef stroganoff. But I also like to forget about the time I got pulled over in California and the cop comes up to the car and says, Can you your driver's license? And I hand it to him and Oh, you're from Arizona. He goes, Are you native? No, oh, man, I'm fucking Caucasian. <laughs> he goes, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Don't lie to me. He said, have you had anything to drink tonight? I said, yes. He said, what have you had? I said, I had a Dr. Pepper earlier, and I got a nice tea right here. He goes, if I search your vehicle, am I going to find anything illegal? I said, no, sir, everything is paid for. <laughs> Even the drugs. <laughs> he goes, how would you like to go to jail tonight? I said, Tonight's not good. I gotta work tomorrow. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Catch me on Friday. Maybe we can work it out. He goes, you're real freaking smartest. He goes, what do you think? You're a fucking comedian? <laughs> yes, I do. And that is my time, folks. I'm Joel Cooper. Thank you guys so much. Joel Cooper here. I, I don't know where I'm going to be next. August 3rd, Tosos. So come see me because I need a lot of help and I love you all. You guys are a freaky fucking crowd. I'm listening backstage to the jokes that you guys are laughing to. You guys are like, I don't know. So I'm going to go with it. We go with it. You guys are back there talking with Kingsley and eating ass. Where's my people over here that were eating ass with all these other people? Did they leave? Did they kill their time? Got you. Got you. Nobody wanted, nobody wanted to admit to that shit. No, I don't need it. So I've asked the other question the other way around. How many of you men over here have gotten your ass eaten out? Oh, yeah. Right round of applause. You lying motherfuckers. I'm gonna tell you that shit right now. First time that shit happened to me, it was, uh, I don't even know what it was. <laughs> and she was crazy and fucked up at the same time. And she was smooth about it too. Like, you know, she, like, she lines me up, I'm at the end of the bed, and I'm like, this shit is backwards right now. <laughs> And so she's, you know, she's doing her thing behind me and whatnot. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, where's this going? And she gets down there and then starts doing her thing and I just like immediately just... <laughs> and the only words that came out of my mouth were... <sighs> <laughs> so you guys are lying. You say it should never happen to you and if it hasn't, I'm sorry. Sign up as soon as you can. But it's, that's just the crazy thing we call life, though, so. But now it's good. Um, over here, how many single people out here? Anybody single? Yeah? Anybody with a significant other? How about the side chicks? Side chicks are out there, too? Yeah. Again, you lying motherfuckers. But that's all right, that's all right. Now, I know, I, mean, I got back into the dating scene now again. You know, I've been divorced for five years. It was like... I lost weight, like lost 32 pounds, trying to get the sexy back or whatever. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm hungry, you know. So, <laughs> but uh, no, you get on there and it's like deceiving and shit, you know. Like, I'm, you know, swipe left, swipe right. Oh, what the hell? Why do you have whiskers? What the hell? Is like, and then you get to the person who's like, you know, they're real clever. Yes. They have three pictures of three women in every picture. Like, I'm supposed to roll the dice and figure out. And you know, you, you got the one that's gorgeous, oh, she looks good, and the one that's like, mm. So, it's like, I don't have time for that shit. You're 45 years old, I'm talking about, you know, what's next to me? Let me see your credit score. That's what I'm gonna see. I wanna see 650 out there. But you know, 420 is always taking that picture in the bathroom with the toilet seat in the background. All fucked up. All oh, fucked up. Seen that picture too? Yeah, and she said, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what kind of dating apps are you on? And I just, you, you, again, you lying motherfucker. Yeah, well, that brain doesn't mean shit to me. I'm saying, right, I'm divorced, okay, so it doesn't mean anything. It's all good, but, you know, I'm just teasing. But, uh, anyway, so, yeah, so try it out. So I'm not like, all right, you know, I'll roll the dice. Okay, well, you know, we go back and forth, we're exchanging. I'm like, you know, cool, we're all right, we're gonna meet. Go okay, grab a drink. So I get there and I'm just like, you know, I'll talk to my boy. He's like, hey man, you better watch out, man. I'm like, you, you might get catfish. I'm like, what, man? That's just not a thing anymore. Yes, there it is. It is real and alive. I walk up and I'm just like, 
coming in and looking, and it's kind of hard. And she wants to be a professional because of this, because she had the right spot. And so she kind of sees me coming in, and I see her, and I'm just like, oh. <sighs> shit. All right, so I'm like, they, they couldn't defeat you in the army, Jay. Come on, let's do this. So I get down, you know, I sit in front of her. I look in her eyes, and I'm like, I know my name is Dayton. <laughs> How are you? And no, my name is Nori. <laughs> so we broke up last week. <laughs> I just, she had high expectations of me, and it just is not going to work at all. At all. So, you know, it's crazy. Like, and kids out here, I don't know, it's like a couple people got there. I don't think that's why you guys are going to come out on Sunday night, right? Nobody has kids out here right now, right? No adopted kids? No, no. 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 Fuck the adopted kids even more. But uh, no, I've got, I've got five, two of them are adopted. Um, awesome thing about having adopted children, you know, they enrich your lives, you know, you're able to, to, to love someone that's not your blood, they teach you things, but the coolest thing about having adopted kids is that you don't have to clean none of the dumbass shit that they do. At all. It's not my genetics. I'm looking at them the other day, my son's in his room, I'm looking at him, he's got a magazine, he's tilting it, I'm like this. Tilting it, and I'm just like, hey, Jay, what are you doing, man? Fuck, I'm looking at the magazine, yeah, well, why are you tilting the magazine like this, bro? I'm trying to look down her bra, Dad, I'm like, give me that shit, man. He walked out of the room, I looked at the magazine, did not work, did not work at all, so. But uh, the couples, no, for real, the couples, like couples that are in love, are you out here at all? At all? Clap. Cool. How many of you guys have joined Facebook accounts? Come on, you guys are in love, it's cute, no? Yeah? Peach, you motherfuckers, I'm telling you right now. We got Janet and Zach out there. Sylvia and Louie. We all know what the real story is, right? The story is, right? It's cool. Who we fucked up. And that's the reason why they have to join Facebook account. And you know it's true because he doesn't post shit on that Facebook page whatsoever. You're know, like, yeah, I know what the hell's going on. Louie no longer has his day. He's done. <laughs> Completely done. Completely done. But, uh, no, but children, so speaking of children, my go on a bucket list adventure with my oldest kid. Go out there and decide to go skydiving. Anybody have been skydiving on here? It's an awesome experience. Check it out. Badass. My daughter wakes up and she is amped as shit. She's just kind of looking around. She's like, we're gonna go skydiving, we're gonna go skydiving. She's like, Dad, you ready? You scared? You scared? I'm like, yeah, I'm scared. I'm jumping out of a fucking airplane. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Dad, don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. Come on, I'm doing this. Um, first of all, Dad's not a bitch and watch your mouth. What the hell? So we get there and you know, we did go to stuff, we got the suits on and everything, and she's just like anime, she wants to go first, and we pile up, and you know, I'm up there, I'm like, why do the pilots have freaking parachutes? Like, what the hell's going on with this airplane, bro? It's like, ah, don't worry about it, we're good, we're good. I'm like, alright, this, this is one way it's gonna happen, bad or good, but you know, so we got there and flying, and my daughter still wants to talk to shit, and she's just like, Dad, you gonna be alright? Like, yeah, 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 don't be a bitch, it's gonna be fine. Drugs, I swear. <laughs> so we go, we jump out, and, and man, it was badass. You get down there, and you're flying, you know, full of parachute. I hit the ground, and she, you know, she was about 05, so I landed before her, and I see her coming in, and I'm like, so pretty, I'm doing that shit, that's awesome. She gets down, and I see she's kind of just like slumping over. I'm like, oh shit. You know, I'm a loving dad and everything, you know, so I walk up to her, hey, baby, you okay? Yeah. Where's all that shit you talking now, huh? <laughs> What's up, Jason Santiago? Had a blast tonight. Crowd was off the chain. The lineup was crazy. Um, gonna be check me out at uh, Stand Up Live, laughing on your head on August first, and then best of the next on the 29th, both at Stand Up Live. Had a great time. It was awesome. I know what y'all thinking. I know. Just another black dude gonna be up here saying nigga all night. <laughs> and that's messed up because I'm not going to let anyone down who believes that, okay? Maybe <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Speaking of niggas, our president, Donald Trump, man, what is up with him? People don't like the president, man. You know what? 
I'm, I agree. I really don't like them, but I'm a military guy and I always respect the commander in chief. So I, I respect it. I respect the man in charge. But I don't like that motherfucker. He crazy. <laughs> God damn. And, and you know what? We gotta get back to that. Respect. Everybody wanna be liked. You know, likes on social media. Like, what happened to respect? You know? I see y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Let me break it down. Um, I was on Facebook the other day, right? And it was this young lady. She had two dildos, right? She was sucking on one and doing herself with the other. Now, I didn't respect that shit at all. But I liked it, okay? I liked it a lot. I'm for the Midwest. Where my Midwest people that make some noise? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I love it here, man. I have to get out of there, though. It, do y'all know it was 60 below zero there this winter? 60 below. And people got the audacity to be homeless there. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Come on now, correct me if I'm wrong. If you homeless, aren't you qualified to live anywhere on Earth outside there? Why the fuck would you stay where it's 60 below? I asked this homeless dude, he's like, well, my whole family here. I'm like, they don't give a fuck about you, sir. <laughs> Six people low out here. They want you dead, actually. <laughs> the homeless people here is real ugly. Oh, man, I ain't never seen the ugliest homeless people. I was downtown. This dude had a sign up that said, I already ate. I just need some dessert. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what kind of bougie bullshit is this? Here come a white lady with a donut. Here you go. I'm like, man, you're enabling him. Stop it. You'll never get off the streets. The homeless people up north, they don't got no bomb etiquette at all. You know, because it's so cold. They don't even ask you regular bomb questions, you know? Yeah, they ask you regular bomb questions. Here, can I have a dollar, all that shit? You pull up to the gas station in Milwaukee in the morning. They... Uh, hey, brother. Can I sit in the car with y'all for five minutes? <laughs> give you a dollar. No, you ain't nothing, man. Get away from my car. Go to Arizona. It's bum heaven there. Bum heaven. It's also very violent in the Midwest. I have to uh, move. I was too close. To Anybody from Chicago here? Chicago? Woo! Shout out. Put one fist in the air. Now punch yourself in the face. <laughs> violent motherfuckers, too. They be fucking up the whole a lot of killings, man. I'm telling y'all, man, them kids, they be shooting each other, they don't care about it. I've been to some of the fakest funerals you can ever be in in your life in the last few years. Fake, sir. You ever been to a funeral where you know the person going to hell and everybody acting like he not a shit? Man, it's weird. See? Even the pastor up there lying like, yes, sir, he preached it, gave his life to the Lord. I'm like, uh, yeah, when they shot him, shit. Nobody ain't never been to church in his life. Stop lying, shit. I know him. He wasn't shit, okay? This funeral should be in a haunted house, not a church. Right and you know, some of these kids, they ain't took one good picture their whole life, so they gotta like Photoshop the obituaries now. That's crazy, man. I went to my guy Dirty Duan funeral, right? Dirty Duan, that was his name. I couldn't believe the picture that his mama put on the obituary, right? I was there when we took this picture, right? Check this out, y'all. He had his middle finger up. He said, fuck you, right? He had his gun in the other hand. Fired it off when they took the picture. <laughs> they had like a mouth full of gold teeth. He was saying, fuck you. <laughs> That's the picture his mama put on the obituary. But she photoshopped it, right? She took the fuck you middle finger out at a dove flying out this motherfucker. She took the pistol out his head out of King James Bible over the John 13 and shit. She even took out his gold teeth and put a white smile on it. And slapped some angel wings on the back. I said, bitch, I'll knock every bitch you ever go there. Oh, goddamn well, he going to hell. Stop it. <laughs> That's the mean shit to say. I don't know who's going to hell shit. None of us do. We need to stop saying that. As a matter of fact, some of y'all gonna make it to heaven and you're gonna see people there who you don't think should have made it. <laughs> so 
fuck your head up too. You know, like, yes, Lord, I, I followed the path I was disciplined. The gates are this way. Thank you, Father. Y'all need the wine. How the fuck he make you here? You got party like what I told you to get high and fuck them hoes with me. And I heard that shit you was saying at my funeral. Walking through some more, like, what is going on here? Oh, Keisha made it? Really, God, Keisha? She got all five of her aborted kids following her. I said, oh. Kids, like, Mommy, you finally made it. She still don't want to say, I just got here. Boom, okay? I know you like that. Speaking of being a bad parent, you know what, I've been fucking up too. I ain't gonna just put other people's shit out there. I've been fucking up too, y'all. Uh, my son, he's four years old, and he knows shit that I ain't teach him. And that's really bothering me, because I'm pretty close to my kids, right? Let me tell y'all a story so y'all can understand better. Okay, in my household, for me and my wife to have sex, all kind of shit gotta be done, or she ain't horny, right? Like, house gotta be clean, kids sleep or gone, bills pay, gas in the car. All this dumb ass shit, don't clap to that. All this dumb ass shit. Or she ain't horny, for real, right? So one time, you know, it's just me, her, and my four-year-old son. Out. He knocked out sleep, he out. So I'm like, you know, is the gas bill pay? Yes, motherfucker. Do this shit, right? So we did, she's like, hurry up, I'm like doing it when the kids here. So we getting it in, right? About six minutes in, dog. I don't feel no tingling down here. I'm like, oh shit. This went from a fuck to a fuck fuck, right? Wrong. Here come my son knocking on the door and shit. Can I have some cereal? She get mad. What you said he was sleeping like he was. Hurry up and finish and don't make no noise. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm doing these slow ass strokes, but you know, they're intense, right? My ass muscles clenched up and sick, and I let out this loud, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh shit, ah, right? And right on cue, my son yells at the door, okay, now can I have some cereal? Now! My heart beating telling y'all this shit. What the fuck you mean now? Damn! Man, it messed my head. I understand you probably knew what we was doing. Well, how do you know I was done? You know, you should You should know about finishing. <laughs> Well, me and my wife been married off and on for about 18 years. <laughs> no bullshit, man. I ain't not, y'all. I got married real young. Like, she was 18 and I was 20. It was just babies and shit, man. And that shit didn't last that long. We ended up getting a divorce. Separated for like five years. I hated her. She hated me. We got a little older, y'all. We fucked around, worked it out, got back together, and remarried, y'all. No, but we've been married for about seven years now. Give it up for Rank and Silly. Oh, a lot of people can't do that. Well, let me give you some advice if you reconcile with somebody. Shit. Don't ever talk behind a person's back if you plan on getting back with them. Oh, I was talking about her like a dog the whole five years and forgot shit. Now I look stupid when I bring around people we know. <laughs> like, come on, honey, talk. Look, y'all remember uh, Nikki, right? My ex-wife? The whole tramp ass bitch, Nikki? The punk bitch whose car we was gonna burn up? Yes, this is the punk bitch. Yeah. I'm going through that shit for years. And I like crazy, too. What a crazy woman that makes noise. Yes, all that crazy, brother. Stop trying to figure it out, shit. Just gotta deal with it. But my wife a different crazy. She liked the crazy, like, if we had an argument at home the night before, she go come to my job and finish the motherfucker without insulting me and shit. Yeah. I'm at work trying to get my mind right. So, uh, we going to Arby's so much, Mark? They like, oh my God, it looks like your wife and she looks pissed. She 
She over here with her pajamas on and shit, no bra on, and she ain't even trying to play it off. She come in like, how the fuck everybody doing, okay? I just need to talk to this bitch outside right now. Is everything alright? I'm like, oh yeah, it's cool. She just cranking in the morning. Let me go check. Let me get you. I don't know. We outside, fighting like a boat. I come back into work, shirt ripped halfway down the chest, forehead scratched up, bleeding. Still trying to play it off. Like, huh? Oh no, everything's fine. She just needs the house keys. Um, so, uh, are we going to lunch? I'm like, God, you're bleeding. Yep, ran into the bushes. Behind the building? What were you? I had the peace. Stay out of my business, okay? Come on, let's take my car. Oh shit, your wife's breaking your windows. I know, I locked the keys in the car. Hey, you scraped my window! Fuck you! I love you too! I think she said fuck you. Look, man, stay out of my business. Yes. I had to get saved, man. We don't go through that no more. Go my church feel that. Like, well, okay, I get it. What's this? If you love the Lord, make some noise. Make some noise. Man, the church be some crooked motherfuckers, man. I know. Huh? Took me a long time to find a good church home, right? I remember I was going from church to church. The first church I went to, the pastor was like one of them pastors who lay hands on you. God bless you. You, you know, people was faint. Everybody, this motherfucker touched pain. I was like, God damn! <laughs> Powerful, right? Wrong. This dude was tripping people and pushing them. <laughs> he had a cold trip head push thing that he must have been doing for 30 years, right? And I didn't see this. I take my dumb ass up there. I loosen my body up so the spirit can flow through me. Man, he almost killed me. And I think he called me a motherfucker before he slammed my head in the ground. The last thing I remember. God bless you, mother. I, I thought he sent me straight to heaven. I'm like, wow, he is good. Jesus? They're like, I know you're in a hospital, sir. And your wallet is missing. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is a star to that rob me? <laughs> Look at out of here. Uh, then I went to this one church where right? it was a small one. It was about half the size of this half of the one. It was like real small congregation, right? I actually like this church. Only problem was, the pastor was too close to us, as if we was like a real small church. So every Sunday, he'd use your life problems to drive his points home. So, yeah. So I'm just gonna uh, reenact him before I get off the stage. Y'all been to church before. I need the church to say amen. amen. I wish I had half a church in here. I need the church to say amen. amen. That's right, because it's a glorious day to praise Jesus. But well, see, it wasn't for Brother Daryl here last night, y'all. We all know we got a cocaine problem, amen. Eh, <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. He gets his check on Saturday. Smoke dope with the enemy all night. Then he come here with a dime. But he hit the present in the face of God, amen. Eh, it's all about being present, saints, because the devil becomes like whirlwind. Just take everything out your life. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about? When these different men come in and out your life and have a bunch of kids with you and leave you. Just teach you, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> she knows the way to where before she got saved, she was open like a 7-Eleven, amen? Ain't none of these kids got the same daddy, not bad one. They seen her come in this church with a different man for the last eight years. They are here, but she here. Present. In the face of God, amen? Y'all let wrongdoings dictate your life. The blood of Jesus cleanses your whole, amen? amen? And no one can attest to that better than Deacon Wilson right here. <laughs> See, Deacon Wilson here is a registered sex offender. <laughs> Register! Praises God with the best of them. Ain't qualified to go 50 feet near school. <laughs> but he qualified here in the house of God, amen? That's why Deacon Wilson will be in charge of the children's choir, amen? <laughs> The black of the berry, the sweet of the jewels. It's your baby mama's favorite comedian, T. Dot Kingsby. Ah, uh, shit. I'm doing a show wherever the wind blow me, man. But follow me on Instagram if you want to find out. That's at T. Dot Kingsby, at T. T. Yeah, I forgot to spell my name. T. D. O. T. 
K I N G S B Y. One blood. What's up, white people? There's a black man in the house right now. This is a real African talking right now. You see what I'm talking? Fuck this black dudes. They think that they're black. I'm the real black man. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for coming out, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for staying out late on Sunday night. You got a lot of shit to talk about. Uh, first, just give, give a round of applause for the, all the comedians you see tonight. No comment. Also, make sure you take good care of your witch man. They've been giving you a lot of fucking alcohol all night. Right? Make sure you take, care of, take good care of them. That's awesome. Love you guys. Hey, listen. Let me tell you a little bit about me, all right? As you can see, I'm not really from here. Yeah, I'm from Iowa. Go <laughs> out, that's right, yes. If I do anything wrong, if I, my English is not my language, I'm learning from fucking half Iowa people, you know, fucking white people. If shit goes down, don't blame on me, blame on them. They don't want to talk me bad English. Anyway, uh, when I came to this country 22 years ago, I was like, man, this would be great. They sent me to America. I'm like, hey, you go to America, learn something, and then come back. I left Ethiopia in 1994. I went straight to Iowa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in 1995, I'm in Iowa. It's just me and a bunch of white people. <laughs> but they were like, hey, go to America, learn something, and then come back and help people. You know, I'm in healthcare, I'm a pharmacist doing the day. Monday to Friday, I give people drugs. I'm like, yeah, there's a blue pill, you kill yourself. I don't know. <laughs> but no, so when I came to America, you know, they sent me to Iowa. I went to finish school, and they kept calling me. Like, hey, you're done now, you can come back. I'm like, fuck no. I'm not going back, damn it, find someone else. They have chicken wings in America, you know what I mean? <laughs> that guy knows. They got chicken wings and white women. You can't find that combination in Africa, you know? Yeah. Sit right here. <laughs> Fucks you up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I said, when I came to America, I didn't know English. You know, I had to learn English in Iowa, right? I remember when I was in gym class, my friends kept saying, you know, asshole, asshole. I'm sitting there, like, what the hell is an asshole? <laughs> then again, in America, assholes mean chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's wonderful. <laughs> I went home that night and I kept repeating the word asshole, asshole, you know? I'm like, man, I've become an American so quick. <laughs> I'm going to use my American English tomorrow. <laughs> I went back to school. My teacher was standing by the door, I walked by and said, Good morning, asshole. <laughs> I was like, what the hell did he call me? Like, I said, good morning, asshole. What's wrong with you? And you know what happened when you get in trouble in high school? They send you to the principal's office. I went to the principal's office and the principal said, like, hey, what happened, man? What did you do? I didn't do anything. I just called her good morning, asshole. She's like, oh, who's your teacher? I'm like, oh, Mrs. Johnson. I'm like, oh yeah, uh, she's my ex-wife. Just go back and call her a bitch. She likes to call her a bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to get, fuck this guy, man. He's just trying to get me deported, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had a good time, man. I love America. Well, this is a wonderful country, you know. America is the best country in the world, right? But here's the problem. Americans, you guys have this confidence. Like, you know, I'm American, I know everything, you know, fuck you, right? <laughs> And you don't want, you always want to be in the morning and everything. You want to be in the morning, all the fucking thing you want to be. You don't want to take number two. It's okay to take number two. Well, that's why you're full of shit all the time. <laughs> but Americans, you just, you just want to be in the morning and everything. You don't want to fight, you don't want to space, you don't want to kill black people. <laughs> you don't want to bomb people. <laughs> it's okay to be number two. Don't fucking kill everybody. <laughs> But I like it here. When I came to this country, I'm like, this is going to be wonderful. America, the best country in the world, right? I'm going to find me a good American girl. I'll be the happiest man in the world. I didn't want to get married an African girl. You have to pay a dowry in Africa. You guys know what dowry is? 
You pay money to the girls' family. American girls are free. I don't have to pay shit. Until you get a divorce, you're like, holy oh, fuck, you said that. I don't understand why divorce is so expensive. Here's the thing, in America, when you get divorced, all you should go to your ex-wife. This is the reason why a lot of white women are missing in this country. <laughs> you have to pay this thing called album money. What the fuck? You want to pay money to someone you want to kill? <laughs> you know what I mean? If I get married to a market girl and we get a divorce, she wants to get paid album money, I'm moving back to Africa. <laughs> Yeah, good luck finding me in the jungle, goddammit. <laughs> How are you gonna find me? You can Google me all you want, and I'll come find shit. <laughs> Every now and then I will go on Facebook live video, like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> so I'm getting money, I'm in the Congo, goddammit. I'll give you a bullet diamond or fucking cash, whatever you want. You have to come to Africa and get it. It's wonderful, man. So, uh, but no, so I met a, a, an American girl, right? We moved in together. After about a year, I realized, now I know why you white guys kill your wives. <laughs> I met a white chick, we moved in together. <laughs> it's the thing, white women, you guys are beautiful. I love white girls. White girls are beautiful, smile. But you kill people slowly. <laughs> but you kill people emotionally. <laughs> You don't die right away, you die like 10 years later. <laughs> I'm not saying black, black women are any better, but at least black women will let you know how they're going to kill you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Black girls will show you a knife, I'm going to fucking kill you with this knife. <laughs> they don't fuck around, they're going to do it. <laughs> but white women don't do that, they just like, I'm going to go on Google and look for poison or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk medicine. Who's in who's here who's physician? Anybody who's a doctor in here? I know I've heard some bunch of doctors in the house. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I hate physicians, man. Fuck physicians. <laughs> As a pharmacist, you know, every day I go to work, I'm like, I've been fucking talking to doctors today. And doctors are fucking bitches, you know? They're always in here. The fucking old man, they think they own medicine. You have to listen to the fucking doctor. You know what I mean? But when I, I, I used to live in Iowa, I used to work for CVS Pharmacy, right? And uh, back then, if you write a prescription for, uh, you know, prescription medication, you have to go to the uh, process. You go to the pharmacy, you drop it off, and the pharmacy will call your name and say, prescription ready, come pick it up. So I did that. And uh, here in America, you guys have, you like to sue people. Americans like to sue somebody. <laughs> I don't understand why. Somebody wanted to sue me because I didn't pronounce the name right. I'm like, Jesus, I'm going to sue you, you stupid African. You didn't come to this country and sold people. And in America, you have this thing called customers are always right. <laughs> in Africa, customers don't know shit, do you? <laughs> you don't have to be nice to them. But this lady came in and uh, she was an Asian woman. She said, oh, just, you know, Asian people are known to be polite, good people, nice people, right? That place came from hell. <laughs> she's like, hey, you, you fucking just pronounce my name right. She said, I'm going to steal you. And I lost it. I'm like, listen there, woman. The medication will work the way it's supposed to work. It's not going to stop working because I didn't pronounce the name right. So get the fuck out of my pharmacy. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't last very long on that job. I quit. Now let's move to Arizona. I got a job in the middle of the pharmacy. I just made people drugs. I don't have to talk to anybody. It's wonderful. But then a few months ago, they changed the script. They're like, hey, now you have to answer phones. Now I have to talk to old people. Number one, they don't hear very well. Number two, I have an accent. They don't understand the fucking thing I'm saying. <laughs> the other thing I did on a week ago is this guy calling, 
this study this medication called Fromax. Fromax is used for BPH, you know, you pass it, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so the guy called and he was like, is my prescription ready? And I'm like, no, it's not ready. The medication is still on back order. Do you have anything else I can help you with? Because I'm trying to, you know, provide good customer service. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I have a question for you. You're a pharmacist, right? Like, yeah, sure. What can I do for you? He said, well, every time I sit down on the toilet, my balls touch water. <laughs> but do you have an exercise you recommend that I can use to swim my balls? I'm sitting there like, you sick son of a bitch. <laughs> I didn't say that, I was thinking it. But I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I'm trying to come up with a really intelligent answer to this guy. I'm like, dude, I don't think there's a muscle down there. I think you suck with long balls, man. <laughs> Maybe you need the duct tape or something. <laughs> Put up your fucking balls. <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have Mexican people in the house? Do you have Mexican here? <laughs> do you speak Spanish? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you with Mexican people? They talk shit about you around now, you know, when they know you don't know the language, they talk shit about you. I speak Spanish. Mucho <laughs> pronoto. That's all I know, that's it. But here's the thing, I like Mexican people. Here's the good, Mexican people are the, the only people that don't make fun of me for being black. Right? Everybody give me shit for being black. See what I mean? Mexican don't do that. My Asian friends, what is it when Asians always take a picture over their time? <laughs> Everywhere you go, Mexican Asians fucking take a picture. My Asian friends are like, hey, it's mom, you can't see the picture. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? How in the hell do you expect to see you when the eyes are halfway closed? <laughs> it's not my fault, open your fucking eyes. <laughs> But they think white people are the worst. I grew up around white people. I know a lot about white people. White people will make fun of you without you knowing it. <laughs> like you find out two hours later, like, I'm gonna fuck up with you. <laughs> but my white friends are like, hey, listen, man, we're gonna go to the pool, get some sun, get a little bit of tan. You wanna come? <laughs> fuck you, goddammit. <laughs> you gotta look like I need a tan. My African American friends too, they look fun of me for being extra black. <laughs> they look fun of me for being extra black, you know what I mean? I think they're just jokes, because my dick's bigger. <laughs> oh, yes, man. I'm telling you, this is not one of those light skinned rock apartments out there. It's a real African, my dick I'm talking about. Getting shit with the jungle, you know what I mean? <laughs> You can't find this in Chicago, dude. <laughs> so, um, before I get out of here, I have one thing I want to talk to you guys. Here in this country, we have a lot of racial going on, like a red race war, people killing each other because they don't live like you. You know, a prisoner's resident, shit like that happening. It's not just America, it's all over the world. Right? I think that's fucked up. I think the world would be really boring if we all looked the same. You know, why would I want to go to South Korea if everybody looks at me in South Korea? Fuck that, I want, I want to go see somebody different, right? I want, the thing is, I will blame God for doing that. If you make you, God made you to be who you are for the rest of your fucking life. I want to change that. If I was God, I would change your race every two years. <laughs> That way you're not going to be a dick to somebody. <laughs> I wouldn't even tell you about what race you're going to be until the night before. I mean, I wouldn't tell you about <laughs> So when you find out when you wake up in the morning, and then you wake up and like, damn, fuck, man, I'm Mexican again. <laughs> and I wouldn't make you and your wife the same race either. I'd leave you a tall black woman and then you fucking little Chinese guy. <laughs> Okay with me, I would do it. I'm okay with it. As long as it doesn't change the size of my dick. 
Who has background in your desires and changes every two years? <laughs> Nobody will ever want to be Chinese at all. <laughs> so, two years ago, they, uh, they've done this study, they went around the world and find out that um, in globally, average penis size is about six inches. Globally, right? In America, it's 5.8. And I think that's wrong. We got a lot of Chinese people in California. <laughs> They're bringing down the habits, man. It should be Americans without the Chinese. <laughs> and, and they find out that, you know, there's only 3% of the world population that have 9 inches or bigger. Only 3% of the world population. I'm reading this, I'm like, damn it, man. It doesn't really matter what I do, I'm still a minority. <laughs> Before I get out, I have one last joke for you guys. <laughs> you guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much for staying out. But here's the thing. I grew up in Iowa, right? I tell people I'm from Iowa. People don't believe me. But I really grew up in Iowa, right? A lot of my friends are white guys. And I spend most of my time around white guys. And I do some shit that I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> I get in trouble by accident, you know what I mean? And then, here's the thing. You a white guy, yes? <laughs> Sure. But here's the thing, when white guys, when you guys go out and have a good time, you do the thing called shit face. You're gonna go, it's get shit face this time, you know? You're gonna fucking shit face. The first time I heard that, what the hell is the shit face, man? Like, don't worry about it, man. Get, come with us, you're gonna have a good time. Alright? As long as you don't shit your face, I'm cool. <laughs> One night I was in graduate school, we all went out and got all shit face, you know? Three o'clock in the morning, my buddy came up to me like, Gabe, listen, man, this is what I'm gonna do. You can go out, take one of those girls' camera, go to the bathroom, take a picture of penises, and put it back on the table. <laughs> this is awesome, man, let's do this, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> so we did. I went to the bathroom, we took a picture of penises, and when I was leaving the bathroom, I realized I'm a proof black guy in the <laughs> There's no way I'm going to get away with this. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is KPL. Right, Thanks oh for coming God. out. Oh I uh, have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But uh, you can follow me on Facebook, KPL, B I E L. That's my last name. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, the same shit. You, if you want to come see me again, come to Laugh Factory in Hollywood in a couple months. I'll be down there and I'll hook you up. Give my little brother Darrell Johnson a big hand of applause, round of applause for all the whole show. He's been giving up for everybody tonight, and it's the first time somebody's seen something about him. So one more time, a little more noise for Darrell Johnson. And don't stop now because I want you to make noise for everybody you saw before me tonight. See? You want to put a to Molly's and do a shit in the parking lot? The old bastard can't even get on stage. <laughs> <laughs>